I want to preach this morning on the subject, how to honor your mother. How to honor your mother. And, and by the way, before I even get started, please don't forget about this afternoon, the, the Mother's Day parade at 3 o'clock. We just want to love on you, honor you, and celebrate you. So uh, today at 3 o'clock, don't forget about that. But the Word of God today, how to honor your mother. I think that's very, very, very important. So if y'all ready, I'm ready to preach this. And if you have your Bible, please turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. I'm excited about this. I'm excited to give you this word. And I pray that you are blessed. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. I'll be reading out of the New King James Version today. And I want you to lean in. I want you to listen to this because this is a word I really believe that we need back in the earth today. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3, honor. Everybody say honor. Honor. Hallelujah. Listen to what it says. Honor your father and mother. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, listen to this, with a promise. With a promise. In other words, God says, if you honor them, I promise you something. Watch what he says. That it may be well with you, and here's his promise, says that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Live long upon the earth. And the reason why it will extend your life, <laughs> listen to this, is because we the parents won't kill you. Now, that's right, amen. If you honor us, we won't kill you. But if you don't honor us, it's probably a good chance it won't, it, you won't make it. I'm just, I'm kidding, y'all chill out. Don't worry about that, all right? But uh, I, it's true, though. So listen, honor your mother. And it's very important that you get this. This is one of the top 10 commandments in the Bible. Honor your father. Honor your mother. Honor your parents. Because listen to me, how you treat your parents really does matter to God. It really does matter to God. So much, it matters to God. He said, I'm going to promise you two things. Here's how much by you honoring your father and your mother, God says, I'm going to give you two things. And I love this. He says, it will be well. One translation says, good for you. Yep, it sure will. And number two, you will live a long life here on earth. It will be well. It will be good for you. And number two, you'll live a long life life here on earth indicating listen to this if you don't honor your parents it's not going to go well for you and you're going to shorten your life you think about how powerful this is if you do not honor your parents it's this important i believe what i'm preaching this morning if you do not honor your parents it's not going to go well for you prisons are full of people today because they do not honor their parents and he says, if you want to live a long life, honor your father, honor your mother. And that's powerful. That's some powerful words from God. And we need to take heed to the word of God because listen to me, we're, we're living in a disrespectful and a dishonoring generation. And I'm telling you, under the word of the Bible, God is just not going to sit back and watch that happen. He sure isn't. I promise you there's a payday for dishonor. There's a payday for disrespect. And, and I guess my question to all the children, I wrote this in my, in my personal notes, and all the youth out there, are you the kind of child or youth that you would like to raise? Let me, let me go a little bit farther. Would you want your children to marry someone like you? Oh, I'm preaching really good now. Would you want your children to marry somebody like you? Would you want to raise you? Can I give you one more? Just please let me give you one more for my, for my sanity. If you're dating a person who is disrespectful and dishonoring to their parents, you need to drop them like they're hot. You need to get away from them because it's just a matter of time, I promise you, before they turn on you. It's just a matter of time before they turn on you. And if you want to find the right person, listen to me, if you want to find the right person to date or to marry, here's your first sign. Watch how they treat their parents. Ooh. Watch how that person treats their parents. Because I promise you, the fruit don't fall very far. 
Ever how they treat their parents, that's what you're buying into. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost on that one. And by the way, I wrote this, I wrote this down. This is my sermon so I can preach it how I need to preach it. I've already told Destiny, don't be bringing some, some old pants on the ground, disrespectful, dishonoring, back-talking boy into my house and ask me to bless that kind of relationship. It ain't gonna happen. I got a scripture for you. This is so good. But I need preaching yet, but it's good. Hebrews chapter 13, verse eight. Here's the scripture that God gave me. You ready? Not today, not tomorrow, or forevermore. Somebody say amen. And that comes from Brian's living translation. <laughs> yeah, not today, not tomorrow, or forevermore. So listen to me. I want to give you four ways, really quick, how to honor your mother. How to honor your mother. How do you honor your mother? This comes straight out of the Bible. How do you honor your mother? Number one, I'm going to fly like a butterfly and sting like a bee, so y'all hang on, all right? Love your mother unconditionally. Love your mother unconditionally. Listen, no matter what, and I know some of you because I can feel the vibe all, even through that camera lens. Brian, you don't know my mother disrespects me, and so if she disrespects me, you better be careful. Because if you want to live a long life, and if you want a good life, it don't really matter. Watch, I'm talking to you personally on a, on a personal note. No matter how people treat you, how do you treat them? No matter what, the best way to honor your mother is to love her. Love her unconditionally. You love her when she's young, and you love her when she's old. You love her when she has much to give, and you love her when she has nothing to give. You love her when she's up, and you love her when she's down. You love her when, she, when things are going good and when things are going bad. We are commanded. Watch, this is, not a, this is not a suggestion. God says, I command you. And when God commands you, he's, he backed it up with a promise. God says, I command you to love your mother unconditionally. Watch this. No matter what. Watch. We, we don't love to keep getting and getting and getting and getting. We just love because. My, my little baby girl, Destiny, she's watching this morning. And uh, Pastor Joey made a statement a while back. He said, Brian, we get one chance to raise them. Listen to me. We get one chance to raise them. So I'm going to raise them right. I remember Destiny, she was a little girl. She was probably four or five years old. And uh, now she's 15, going on 30. Somebody help me preach. That's good. And I remember asking her a question. I said, why do you love Daddy? Why do you love Daddy? And I was expecting, because you're my Daddy, or because you help me, or you give me stuff. But I'll never forget what she said. She said, Daddy, I love you just because. Just because. And man, that blessed me. That blessed me, that touched my heart. She didn't have to have a reason. She didn't have to have stuff. She didn't have to have the right car, the right vehicle. She just loves me because. I love that. I love you, Daddy, just because. Can I give you one more? Number two. Number two. Hug your mother like you mean it. Woo! I ain't talking about no side hug. You good, Mama. Love you. I ain't talking about that. Hug your mama like you mean it. You know, through this COVID-19, you know the one thing I miss? I haven't hugged my mama. Now, I don't mean to get mushy on you, but I'm telling you, when you hug somebody, that, that, they can feel your heart. They can feel your heart. You know, in the Bible it says, this is a side note, God just spoke this into me about feeling your heart. You know, every shepherd had, had a staff in his hands, and sometimes he had to break the sheep's legs because they kept getting out of the pen. They kept going where they wanted to do, wandering. So he had to break their legs. And I've, I'm sure you've seen this picture a thousand times where the shepherd reaches down and puts the sheep over his neck, around his neck, holds on to his legs. You know why he puts the sheep around his neck? Because his ear is close to his heart. There's something about when you get to hug somebody, especially your mama, there's a bumper sticker that I seen about a year ago that said, have you hugged your kid today? 
And I think we should make our own stickers. <laughs> I think we should put a sticker on our teenagers' doors. And I, I think it should read, have you hugged your mom today? <laughs> Woo! That's good. Y'all get that later. Have you hugged your mom today? Isn't it amazing how so quick we can take for granted our mamas? Tell your mom that you love her. How do you show your mom that you love her? You give her a hug. I'll never forget this. We was at a big old convention, a, 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 a conference, and the pastor got up. He made a statement. He said these words. And I, I was a young man. He said these words. If you couldn't talk, how would somebody know that you love them? And he, he got up on the stage and he said, I'm not going to say a word, but I'm going to show you how you love somebody without even saying a word. He hugged them. He hugged them. Tell your mom that you love her. If I've just got to get up behind this pulpit today and just say, listen, hug your mom like you mean it. Beth, you hit the nail on the head. I guarantee you there's some people that if they can rewind their tapes and go back. They said, I wish I could have told mom that I loved her more and hugged her more. And I guess I was brought up in a different time <laughs> or a culture because we knew around my house growing up, there were certain things that you could say to mama and certain things you couldn't say to mama. Yeah, that's, that's right. And we as kids, we just didn't go around the house and say whatever was on our minds. Uh-oh. Yep, uh-oh, uh-oh. It's going to get good in here. I remember the one time daddy spanked me. It, it, in Kentucky, it's whoop. I remember the one time that daddy whooped me. Hallelujah. I didn't think he was going to ever stop swinging. I didn't think, I was a teenager, and my mother, I'll never forget this, St. Mary. My mom's name's Mary, St. Mary. She said something I didn't agree with. So I decided just to share my thoughts and my concerns. I just opened my mouth, and I said something really stupid. So disrespectful and so dishonoring. And listen, I don't know where daddy come from. <laughs> I didn't see it coming, but the next thing I remember was a whomp, a hit, and a smack. I remember that. Daddy was, swinging, Daddy was swinging from the north, the east, the south, and the west. I didn't thought Evander Holyfield done come up out of the closet. It's crazy. And while he was swinging, there's just some things, boy, you just don't forget about it. While he was swinging like a madman. I remember daddy saying these words while he was hitting, speaking. He said, don't you ever talk to your mother like that again. I don't talk to her like that, and you're not going to talk to like her like it either. And I'm talking womp, hit, smack, snap, crackle, pop. I mean, it was, it was on. It was on. And can I be honest with you? To this day, that Kentucky whooping <laughs> taught me a valuable valuable lesson. I'm 48 years old and I still love, I still hug, I still honor, I still respect my mother. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. I love you. Can I hug you? There's something about that. So I'm just telling you as parents, it is okay to whoop. It is okay. Brian, you didn't say that. Okay. Spank them. It is okay I'm telling you in Jesus' name, I didn't get enough of them. If I'd got whipped or whooped for everything I'd done, oh, and today they want to give you a pill. Today, I tell you, don't, don't get a pill. Go to the gospel. Eh? Mm. Just go to the Bible. But I remember that spanking. I remember Daddy setting the authority, the authority in the house. I don't talk to her like that. You're not going to talk to her like that. You're not going to back talk at my... I'm telling you, and I'm telling you what the world needs today. It needs some godly men. Listen, reinforcing a godly mother. We, as Christians, as a man of God, the worst thing, listen, I feel this in my spirit, because I feel I'm just, I'm going to obey God. The worst thing your children can see is a divided daddy and a divided mama. The worst thing, because I'm telling you, your child will pick their favor. Their child will go, well, mama won't say no, but daddy, they won't even go, they'll go around daddy, go straight to mama. And then mama feels by herself. 
But if daddy comes in and says, here's the deal. I'm standing with your mother. And this is, this is our household. This is the way it's going to be ran. I hear teenagers now, I'll just go to my bedroom. I'll take your door off the hinges. See, here's the deal. Teenage, watch this. I, I'm just preaching good. God just keep feeding me. Well, I, I live there. You don't pay the bills. And so I'm just telling y'all in Jesus' name, a snap, crackle, pop will not kill your child. You know, oh, I feel the hugo. You know what will kill your child if you continue to allow them to dishonor you? If you continue to allow them to run the house, to be disrespectful and dishonored, God says, it's not going to be good for you. You're not, you're not, it's not going to be good for you, and you're going to shorten your life upon the earth. So you're what? Hallelujah. You're not doing them a favor by just letting them do what they want to do. Be a mama. Be a daddy. I don't know. I that's good right there. Number three. I feel the Holy Ghost. Number three. Remember your mama. Remember your mother. Remember your mother. Watch this. Little things go a long way with a mom. Yeah, they sure do. Call her. Write her a letter. Tell her you love her. Hug her. Watch this. Ask her to come over for supper. <laughs> Ask her to go to the ball game. Take her on a drive. Please don't forget your mother. Remember her and love her. Hug her. And I promise you, God, I bless you. See, here's what I feel in my spirit. I talked to a lady this last week, and she's 85 or 86 years old. And she said these words, Brian, I just feel useless anymore. I don't feel like I can do anything anymore. And I'm going to get to this next point here in just a moment. I, but, and I want you to listen to this because I dedicate it to you. But moms want to feel like somebody. They want to feel appreciated. Moms want you to love them. And watch this. One thing God spoke into my heart as I was preparing this. My mom gave me the best years of her life. My mama gave me the best years of her life. My mama loved me so much she worked two jobs. My mama loved me so much she kept me in church. My mama loved me so much. I remember this. I remember she raised me right. I had my first job and my mom, I got my first paycheck. Boy, I thought I was something. Three, I think it was three fifteen an hour. Boy, that, you work for that. And I got home, boy, I was happy. And my mama set me down at the table. She said, you realize that 10% of that check goes to, my, goes to God. And I said, mama, he don't need no money. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I try to pull scripture. And my mama said, God allows you to live off 90. But that 10%, listen to me. That goes to Jesus. That goes to his kingdom. My mama taught me, right, mama, thank you. The last point I want to give you about how to honor your mother. Listen, I want you to, this is, this is it. The fourth thing I want to give you, remind your mother she is still needed. I felt that. Because a lot of mamas... They put their time in, they work all their life, then they retire, and they're sitting at home, their kids are doing their things, and they feel lonely. And I'm telling you, they, they feel like they're not needed no more. Listen to me, never underestimate the power of a praying mama. The fact I am standing here today is because I have a praying mama. Never under, underestimate that. My mama gave me to the Lord, but as soon as I entered into this world, my mama told me a story. It's been a while back. My mom was a single lady raising a child, raising a son, raising a heathen. And mom says she literally would pray this prayer because she knew she couldn't do it by herself. My mom reminded me. She said, I told the Lord, I said, God, take Brian Keith. He's yours. Take him and use him for your glory. And I release him into your hands. God, he's your child something powerful about a praying mama. This is a true story. There was a, a young man, he was in the military. 
And he, he made a best friend. They become best friends while he was in the military and war was going on. This is true. And I remember this. I read this in a chapter of a book. This young man was in the middle of the war. The enemy was out there. Him and his friend was down in a foxhole. They, they heard bullets and uh, they, they heard the screaming and the shouting. They knew the enemy was approaching them. And his best friend looked over at him. He said, we need to get out of this foxhole. We need to get back to camp. And I'll never forget in this chapter what this young man said. He said, what time is it? What time is it? And he, he said, what time is it? He said, we're going to die. He said, what time is it? He said, it's 5.55. He said, we can't leave till six. We can't leave till six. So anyway, six o'clock came and they got out of the foxhole. They made it back to camp. And the, the two friends, they got back to camp. And the other friend looked at him and he says, dude, what in the world? We about died out there. He said, why six o'clock? Because this young man looked at him. And he said, because at six, I know mama's praying for me. Mothers are needed. Mothers are needed. And I'm telling you today, one of the greatest ways to honor your mother is to give her your heart. Give your heart to Jesus. Yeah, I asked my mom, I said, Mom, what's the greatest gift that God has ever given you? You know what my mom said? It wasn't the house. It wasn't the vehicles. It wasn't the money. She said, the greatest gift that God has ever given me is that all my children are saved, born again, and on their way to heaven. That's the greatest gift. That's the greatest gift. And I'm going to give, as the praise team comes back up, I'm going to give each and every one of you just a chance. I'm almost finished. A chance. To honor God, listen, and honor your mother's prayers. Listen, if you don't know the Lord, if you don't know if you're ready to stand before God, if you don't know if you're right with God, and you feel far from God, and you're, and you're here today, and, or you're watching me today, and you can honestly say, I know what's kept me alive. Listen to me. I know what's kept me alive. That car wreck should have killed me. Those drugs should have killed me. My sin should have killed me. When I left that party out of my head and out of my mind, I should have never made it home. But I know because of Jesus and because of a praying mama, I'm standing here today. Hallelujah. Feel that in my spirit. Now, I'll tell you what else I feel in my spirit. Some of your mothers, whether they're here on earth, listen to me, or whether your mother is with the Lord right now, they're getting ready to have a shout. Because some of you are getting ready to be the answer to their prayers. You say, Brian, I just don't know if they can pray in heaven. Oh, they're pleading the blood of God over you every day. They're in that great cloud of witnesses. They're cheering his own. I remember when my grandmother passed away. My granny would pray for me every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. My granny would pray for me. And I remember when my granny died. Man, I started going, Greg, I started going through battle after battle after battle after battle after battle after battle. And I'll never forget what the Lord spoke into my spirit, my heart. He said, you got to find somebody, hallelujah, that'll cover you like your granny covered you in prayer. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> prayer is powerful. I'm telling you, if you're ready to receive Jesus, your mama has been praying for you and praying for you and praying for you. Your granny may be in that great cloud of witnesses cheering you on. Maybe you've made tons of mistakes. Maybe you feel guilty. Maybe you feel condemned. That's not Jesus. God is here with outstretched arms saying, come on, come on. 
And I, I felt in my spirit, there's going to be a shout today. A shout from your mama who thought that you was a prodigal and, and away from home and away, sleeping with the pigs and away from the presence of God. Today, watch me lean in. You can change that. So I'm going to say a prayer while God is dealing and God is working. If you're ready to come home, if you're ready to be the answer to your mama and your granny's prayers, if you're ready to make a change in your life, and if you're honest with me, you know good and well, you shouldn't be here right now. But because of Jesus, <laughs> and because of a praying mother, you're here now. So if you're ready, if you're ready, I just want you to say these words. Come on. Say, dear God. Come on, say, dear God. I believe in Jesus. I believe that God raised him from the dead. And today, I confess you the Lord of my life. I'm coming home. I'm going to be an answer to my mama's prayers. I'm going to honor Jesus. And I'm going to honor my mama's prayers. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you just said that prayer, <laughs> welcome to God's, God's family.